Yo, what's up? This is So Says Jay. Welcome to the Aussie Suns Fans Podcast. Yeah, these guys are fucking idiots. Yeah, the podcast is borderline okay, maybe, but I listen to every week, so you should too. Aussie Suns Fan Podcast, and guess what, guys? Sponsored by at Buffalo Trace. <laughs> Unofficially, of course. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's good. Welcome, everybody, to the season two off-season episode one of the Aussie Suns Fans Podcast. My name is Gavin. I am here with Nate and Boyd. How are we going, lads? We are good. Awesome, mate. Awesome. It's How's good to head? be back um, after a, a whirlwind trip to Arizona. And unfortunately, Hamo's on a whirlwind wind trip to Tassie. So he couldn't join us tonight. So Hamo, shout out to you, brother. We miss you. Can't wait till you're back on hopefully next week's pod. Um, but... Uh, Let's be honest, we, we do have to wrap up what happened on the trip, I suppose, Nate. Um, give everyone a little bit of feedback on how it all finished off. To be honest, I remember us doing a pod and talking about <laughs> what we've done at, uh, at to some stage. But, Boyd, you're probably best positioned to tell us where, where were we up to with that wrap-up. Fuck, man. You guys... Um, so we did two. One of them's been um, 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 archived, we'll call it, due to the... Uh, um crap that was just some fucking crap that was that was spat on that and also also i think we've just been really how, sh- how should i say it uncouth in general most of you guys that seems about right secret. it was what, the what secret about, what about the one we actually did on our um channel where did, where did we wrap up do you remember what day were we at it was the first day in downtown it was friday or thursday it was the first day of thursday. squeezy cheese thursday so uh, basically, yes. the uh, the overview of what we did from there was we caught up with uh, Saul from the PHNX podcast, um, Justin, Dan, and uh, Paul from the um, Fanning the Flames podcast. A couple of other guys. We had some wings, um, a lot of beers. I was a bit crook that day, so I didn't drink for several hours. Um, we were there for several hours. I didn't drink for several hours and then smashed about eight vodkas in half an hour before we got back to the hotel and we decided eight vodkas was enough to probably go out again. So we went to Marley's. <laughs> so we went to Marley's. And did we go to Marley's that night? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, was it, Did we already, had, Boyd, when we spoke, had we already been to Marley's and got the memorabilia? Oh, no. Uh well, you, I, I was. We'd only been I, to I the sun know. shop. You've been to the sun yeah, shops. Okay. You haven't been to Marley's yet. But we see. I'm, I'm getting mixed up because oh, we that had was few, the, that a few was video the Thursday calls night well. after we potted. So after we actually potted the, that day and then went to Marley's, yeah, Nate. Yep, because we and wanted to that, watch the NHL. Yeah, so that night we uh, we drank at Marley's from about two p.m. till one a.m. Um, Caught up with the co-owner of Marley's who hooked us up with a shitload of memorabilia. Yeah, um, he was a legend. Just some awesome stuff. And what what did you end up with, Nate? A little bit of a haul. I'm wearing some of it. Yeah, Marley's uh, GCU coach jersey, matching cap. Um, the signed uh, <laughs> shoe, my signed Dan Marley shoe. Um, golf hat signed by Dan Marley. Um, it was a good little haul. Pretty pretty good score. I got the uh, signed Charles Barkley basketball, um, the signed Tom Chambers shoe, and a print that I lost. Yeah, yeah. There was two of those prints. Um, and I lost them both. Yeah, me left them on a plane. Or an airport. Yeah, we can't decide which one. I left them somewhere. Um, this is a really good tale, drink responsibly. Because uh, and not with I either of us, did not. <laughs> I clearly did not, and forgot our posters. So uh, let's let's move on from there. Friday, we we obviously did the wings. We were going to go to the Mercury game, um, but it ended up way too big a night. Um, we didn't even get out of the wing joint until after the game was over. <laughs> That's correct. We uh, we ate a lot of wings, um, drank a lot of alcohol. We went back to the room and went back to Marley's that night. Saturday. Um, we went out to a pool party somewhere, which was pretty cool fun. Um, and yeah, got home pretty late from there. But uh, uh, did we end up going out after that? I don't think we did. Yeah, 
No. Uh, that we had a quiet no. one there. You so went I walk about and then came home because you couldn't get food. Yeah, that's right. And uh, we, I think we still sat up till like three or four in the morning drinking vodka in the room. You did. I did. Um, and <laughs> Sunday, Sunday we went out and probably one of my favourite days of the whole trip, really. We went out to uh, Dan Duarte's from Fanning the Flames. Uh, he and his wife were fantastic hosts, put on a big Mexican spread for us. And um, obviously we we're out there also with Justin, his wife and, and kids as well. We just had a hangout day, drank way too much Buffalo Trace and recorded a secret <laughs> um, podcast episode. All drunken behavior. Those those two guys have wonderful families. They really they do. do. They do. Yeah. And they looked after us the whole time. I mean, Justin for, was absolutely fantastic from the minute we arrived in Phoenix all the way through until the day we left. And even afterwards, when he's trying to help me recover our uh, lost <laughs> uh, yeah, treasure. And, and to a great deal of Boyd's peer pressure as well, picking us up in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I had to, man. I had to. You guys are too so, nice. So I'm just going to put it on them. <laughs> massive thank you to justin and dan they looked after us can't wait to get back and see you guys again um uh, it was it really was a it was a special trip i i loved it nate i i mean you can sit there now and tell everyone how much of a prick i was but i love traveling with you um we we had a ball i reckon for the 10 days or so we were there absolutely did i mean i was a little concerned that gav would be like gav 100 percent of the time but just takes one big night out of him and then he settles down a little bit for the rest of the trip. So it was good. <laughs> Boy, any uh, final questions before we move on and get into the real stuff? Because on our last pod, we didn't talk enough basketball. So let's get back to that. 100, man. Look, yeah, no, I um, will give us a mention because I know you've caught up with some uh, super fans. Yep. Um, yep. So can you coherently... Um, um, shout out them guys, and so what was that? Like, you could there was uh, Tutu, there was um, um, Angelina, there was that uh, armband guy, yep. So, Ke Kevin, um, Lindsay, and uh, Tutu, we caught up with at the Mercury game. Mm -hmm. We also caught up with bumped into them at the sun shop when we went down there and did a bit of shopping, and they looked after us with. They looked after us with seats, basically courtside for nothing, um, hooked us up with after the game signing opportunities. Um, and then they had an event on during the day and got me a signed Diana Tarozzi um, picture for my kids, which was fucking awesome. Um, we caught up with Nato. Nato and his wife, Brenda, they were fantastic. We went out karaoke night um, with them. I think we spoke about that in the last pod. Nate got us kicked out. Um <laughs> the we caught, we caught up with, obviously with Justin, Dan, Paul, um, and a couple of other guys as well as Saul from the PHNX um, podcast. That was actually uh, really interesting too, chatting to Saul about um, how that all came to pass and the the you know a bit about Saul's background as well, because uh, he's pretty much the same age as you and me, Gav. So that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, no, the um... and who who have I missed? Oh, Sombrero, who came out in a fucking awesome car, um, and gave us some gifts that she had put aside for us. But Nate and I both got a bobblehead. We got some uh, Arizona newspapers, some you know, some other sort of stuff from her. So shout out to Sombrero, fantastic. We caught up with Angelina. I think we've already spoken about on the first night. Um, did I miss anyone there, Nate? Wait, I that... mean, you set it all up, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't we think so. Up, we caught up with Gina um, out at Top Golf. Uh, Di Diana Tarozzi's bun. We caught up with her out at Top Golf. Um, yeah, no, it was it was awesome. the The amount of great people we caught up with over there was just it. It, it made the trip for us. Yeah, the, Wait, the that, Suns that... fans' family is it's really strong. It was it was that good. that Kevin fella. Is he is he a real weird cunt? He looks like he's a fucking a bit of a. No. He's like, actually, he's actually he, super polite. Yeah, he's, oh, he, he seems really, like that. really nice. He was he's super a, polite. What I'm saying, what I, what I mean is, by weird cunt, I mean is he like um, a bit zany, a bit fucking out there, like. But no, you're saying he's polite, so that answers the question. Yeah, good, no, look, it wasn't um, there wasn't anything out of the ordinary. I, I think he's probably more vocal and a little bit more up and about at Suns games than he is at Mercury games, but yeah, um, he was really nice. Um, 
great intro, but obviously we probably had a lot more to do with Tutu and um, Lindsay while we're out there. Um, more than Kevin, we didn't speak to Kevin a lot, but um, I, yeah, it seemed like a nice guy. I video chatted you guys one night when you were out on the piss with um, Duarte, Justin, and um, and uh, Paul. Yep. And that was JT's um, wings. Yep. Oh, was it? Okay, yep. cool. I wanted to know that. And also, I got taken into the bar, and um, um, I think Paul and and Nate were sitting at the bar just fucking vibing. Loud as fuck. I couldn't hear anything you were saying. I ended up fucking off shortly after that. But you guys, you guys look fucking like you were in it, eh? Oh, we were hungry, man. Paul and I wanted food. We wanted food, man. They disappeared. They disappeared for an hour, and we caught them at the bar holding hands. Well, they while I was on the phone to them, they started chatting to some to some bird, and um, fucking <laughs> Nate was shit keen, and I'm pretty sure she just shot you down. Yep, yeah, um, absolutely. She was sitting right next to me. And yeah, no, I, saw that, I saw that quite a bit, actually. <laughs> it was great. I loved it. I loved it. It was good. It was good. Anyway, let's let's get on to some, some uh, Suns talk. Yeah, we, let's get on to it. But uh, everyone in Phoenix, hi. Thank you so much for having us. Um, you're all freaking awesome, to be honest. Um, really welcoming and looked after us. So thank you Made very our much. trip. Really did all make right, let's trip. move on. Let's move on to the real stuff. Section one. The DA dilemma. So pre precursor to this, one of the main things I want to say here is, and we've heard it on a couple of pods already. Um, we see it on Twitter a bit. Um, so many people throwing up fucking mental trades and shit like that that just won't work. Let's not get too excited about the like whatever the trade value is. I want to be pretty broad here about what you think may or may not happen with the DA situation. So we've got a lot of people, uh, let's let's be honest, it's DA. So half of Phoenix supporter base wants to keep him, half want him to fuck off. Flex has come out and said, basically he doesn't think DA will be back. Um, the guys on the PHNX pod, they all think he will be. At the moment, it's all up in the air. We don't know anyway. Um, I just want to get what your feeling is. Is he going to go? And what what does that look like? Um, now, I, I might be throwing both of you under the bus here, so I'm happy to go first if you guys want. No, I'm good. So I'll give you a sort of an example. But um, I don't want names. I don't want anything like that. What? Just your expectation of what you think it looks like. So, Nate. The, the, la- the last couple of times you've thrown this out there, I've said, look, I think he starts on the team next season. Whether or not he plays, I don't know, but I think he's here at the start of the season in a Suns uniform, even if it's sitting on the bench. <coughs> For me, that hasn't changed. So I looked at this when you put it in the agenda. I was like, let me look at it from a different angle and see if my opinion changes. So I tried to put myself in James Jones' shoes as the GM. Look at it from this way. And none of the deals out there make sense before he's worth his full value. So there's, there's nothing out there that Especially makes sense to rush the decision. There's the most value in finding out what his market value actually is and letting the season begin. And I just don't see anything else that makes sense other than letting that happen. Yep, good call. Boyd. Yeah, I've always I've always thought that we that we keep him and 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 I'm I'll probably get sucked in because that's all that fucking anyone on Twitter or um, podcasts want to talk about because it's a big thing, right? And it's a lot of fuck there's a lot of speculation around it. So I um I get sucked into, into that a bit. And then I start finding the stuff that I would be okay with and the stuff that um, um, is absolutely ludicrous. And I make my judgments. And I, I don't really post much about it, but dude, we're getting him back. It wasn't that big of a deal when, when you'd look at it and you step back and you take the magnifying glass off of it. It was one fucking blow up. The guy's been a team player for all this time. It was one blow up and it's just fucking... Um, emotions were heightened. I think he stays and you know what, if things fester and it wasn't quite the deal that he wanted, because obviously we can pay him more as the, uh, as the team with the restricted free agency, we can pay him more than any other team. If it gets to a point where we have to match someone else's offer, which is lower, I think, um, I think if that causes any sort of animosity and DA is like, well, fuck, I could have got an extra, an extra year and, you know, an extra 2% in raises every year. If you guys had a fucking, you know, extended that olive branch. Um, if he gets pissy about that, well then, 
okay, that's fine. Wait till the trade deadline and we can get our fucking um, between 28 and um, um, 32 million in. Yeah, yeah, we, we can get that shit back um, in a, you know, in a more apples for apples trade. But right now, all this shit, like we're really, really stretching hard trying to find um, a home for him when really this is his fucking home, man. He plays high school, his college, everything yep. here. And he wants to be here. He just, he just, he just wants his lollies. He wants his pat on the back. And um, yeah, I mean, I was looking, his touches and his minutes dropped. He's got reason. He's got reason to be um, a little bit upset. He was told to be a team player and that he'd, he'd, he'd get all the fucking shit that came along, you know, with, with, with being a top prospect. He didn't get it. So he's got reason, right? And that's fucking fair enough. But at the end of the day, sign and trade would be silly right now unless there's another team out there willing to fucking um, give up so much more um, in a, in a three-team type of a deal. But, yeah, we keep him, and he's here to at least the trade deadline. But I don't see in this culture with James Jones, Monty Williams, um, and the guys that we, we have around, I don't see this festering. I see it coming good. I see it coming good, and I see him being a – um, you know, a top a top three centre in the league next season for the Phoenix Suns, and um, and yeah, yeah. That's One way or another, he's getting his money right. So as soon yeah, as he's he got a, he as soon as he's got a check in his hand, he's going to settle down. Yeah, yeah. And he's that's good. the thing. I think I think the positioning that we're in right now is just posturing. From I think his agents just gone. Da, shut the hell up. Don't do anything. Right now, this is about the negotiation with the Suns. Um, you just need to stay out of everything. If you shut up, the market is going to dictate what you're worth. Um, other teams are going to put their interest forward. They're going to try and get it, et cetera, et cetera. If you shut up, you'll get your bag. Um, I can go back to the Suns and say, here are the three sides that are going to provide us with offer sheets. The Suns will just um, make sure that he gets his bag. I really do see that. I think DA is already close to a top five center in the NBA anyway. Um, so why would we throw that away in a side and trade it and lose all that value? In saying that, just so that people are aware, I think there's two options here. One, if the sign and trade sort of scenario does happen, because the rumor out there at the moment is the fallout that happened, forget what happened on the bench, the fallout that happened was that DA had a fallout with Monty and Devin Booker. If that's the case, um, there's every chance that they look at a sign and trade. If the sign and trades for someone like a Clint Capella, that's all the Suns will ever do. We'll just bring Clint Capella in and that'll be it. But if the sign and trade goes to a younger side like uh, Orlando, who can give us assets... The reason we do that is so that we can trade on trade those assets for a bigger name. Um, yeah, that's, that's how um... we see it right now. So I think there's three <coughs> options. One, we're going to be able to sign DA to his extension. And like you guys said, if if the fallout's real um, and it doesn't get resolved, well, by trade deadline, we can trade him and we will. Two, we trade him for a Capella um, type deal. Um, and that is all we'll do. Capella will come in and he'll be our centre next year. Or three, we trade him for assets that we can on trade for a bigger name. Right. I agree. So, over. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, next section, the Sava spin-off. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail here. Everybody else is talking about it. Um, we see it all over Twitter. We've, we've done this previously, got a bit of blowback. On, on what we did say. I think Boyd got blocked by like 75 people on Twitter. Um, <laughs> just want to touch on it. So obviously another article's come out. Somebody, a long-term employee of the Suns quit, citing a lot of the same sort of shit that was quoted in the first Baxter article. Um, let's just open it. Quick comments. Nate, go. Oh, bullet point this. Um, from what I can tell, the comments that were made were about organizational culture and the only person accused was a direct line manager. Um, I like the way that Jay, Justin's, uh, so says Jay has approached this the entire time. Let's analyze it when there's something to analyze, when there's some proof to present as evidence, let's analyze it when it's the evidence. And at the moment there's sweet fuck all. So my opinion hasn't changed from this sweet fuck all to talk about. 
Boyd. Yeah, mate. She's she's pissed about um, um, her pay packet ultimately, and it's let her. And she's someone's leaked that her counterparts are getting more. Her male ca- counterparts are getting more. Kind of she's fair pissed. enough, though. Yeah, it is fair enough. But you, but guess what? That's not a fucking Sava thing. Corporate fucking um, worldwide. I mm. like that in every fucking industry. Mm. It's not just a fucking hey, Sava's a fucking. An asshole. It's fucking. It's 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 most most CEOs. Most most companies are run like this. It's nothing nothing new. It's not. So basically, it's a it's a it's a timely thing. That is it. Baxter Holmes, is yeah. that the guy? He's fucking. Um, he's chasing tumbleweeds. He's trying to get some fucking some fluff up underneath his um his big expose, which isn't going to get any legs, guys, because there's no fucking clippers. Um, that fucking. I can't remember the guy's name. Donald that, Sterling. Donald Sterling. There's, 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 and 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 as the fan in the flame boy said, there's no smoking gun, and this Baxter Holmes has fucking um, put all this work in, and he's just trying to add, add add some extra clout to it. At the end of the day, man, it's all fucking crap. I, I, I hate talking about it. If he's a cockhead, kick him out of his job. The only reason I, I've got issues with people having having um, constantly having goes at Sava um, is because. Um, there's not, there's never any kudos when the guy does something good, when he, when he, when he does get the fucking checkbook out, when he does pay a guy, when he, well, um... he hasn't done that for a while. Well, hang on, Boyd. You, you said if he's a cockhead, kick him out. Are you telling me that there's not an owner of another team out there that's not a cockhead? No, no, there are, there are. They're probably I mean, all cockheads, man. Except anybody that has that many millions or billions of dollars usually got a bit of cockhead in them. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe no, no. Well, not if he's a cockhead. If he's if he's a if he's a like a like a a womanizing fucking sexist pig, and he gets caught out with that sort of shit, being a cockhead, that's different. Get, get him out. But if he's just a prick of a boss, a micromanager, oh, we've or a, all had him, or a, or a cock, fucking deal with it. Go work somewhere else. I don't want to hear about it as a fan. Fuck, you know. Personally, personally, I've never been a fan. I'd love him to sell the side. But to be honest, whoever comes in, we're going to have the same shit. Like you guys said, uh, it is what it is. Um, there's not enough at the moment in this article that is going to have the NBA come out and say, you must sell this team a la Donald Sterling. Or even there, they didn't force Donald Sterling to sell the team. They just said, you're never allowed to come back into the stadium. So he had to sell the team. Hey, so... What? What, what, about the, what about the rumours of other circling owners? Like, wasn't the, the CEO of Disney or something or the owner of yeah, Disney? Yeah, there's been so talking about the former, former CEO of Disney um, was interested in purchasing the franchise. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> so that's enough on uh, Robert Saba. We've got a, uh, a special thumbs up, thumbs down here now. What we're going to do is thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> based on who from the current Sun, or the, the last year Sun Squad will be back next season. We're going to do a thumbs up, thumbs down. Straight away, we'll have any comments on each of the individual players. Um, and then we'll move on to the next. So we're going to start with the obvious ones. Well, the obvious ones. Oh, so we're going to comment on the, as per each player. May as well comment per player. Otherwise, we, we go all the way to the end. We'll, we'll just get it done straight up. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, Devin Booker. Thumbs Nate. up from Nate. Yep, yeah, we got to be up from him too. Yeah, thumbs up, guys. Yeah, thumbs up from Boyd. Thumbs up from me. the The second part of this is he's super max eligible. Do we pay him the super max? Nate, you you give Book whatever he wants. He is the franchise face. Boyd, what, one thousand percent thumbs up. Give him, give him that, and and give him a fucking um. Give him that all-star court that's at Robert Sarver's house from, um, was it 2007 or something? Give him that as well. Fucking what what an opportunity, though, to reset that culture, right? Just give him what he wants, pay yeah. the man, set the new precedent. This is our future. Like Devin, Devin Booker, white. he's super max eligible, pay him the money, um, and he is the, he is the cornerstone of this franchise moving forward. It's simple as that. Next one, Chris Paul. Nate. Thumbs up. Boyd. Thumbs up. Keep it. I'm also a thumbs up. 
there's been a little bit of talk about potentially trading Chris Paul or moving him on or whatever the case may be. The no. Phoenix Suns will not be moving Chris Paul on this year. Now, just before we move on, these, just to clarify the thumbs up, thumbs down, these are players that will be on the roster for game one next season. Correct. Just wanted to stipulate that, cool. Correct. Macau Bridges. That's a clear thumbs up. He's the longest contracted player we have. 100% thumbs up, 100%, boys. I'm thumbs up too. I can't see any potential trade unless it's a massive, significant superstar and the grounding point is Mikhail Bridges. I can't see any uh, movement on that because we're in Phoenix and if they trade Mikhail Bridges, they'll burn the joint to the ground. <laughs> DeAndre Ayton, Nate. I think we will cover this. I believe he'll be there at game one. Yep. Thumbs Boy, up. He's back. He's back. Hopefully. I'm good. also thumbs up. I think they will extend him. Um, I don't even think it'll get to a match. I think we'll just extend him anyway. Um, this is all games between the agent and the team. Cameron Johnson. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Boy. Yeah, mate. I'm a thumbs, thumbs down. down. You think they're going to trade him in the offseason? I think they will trade Cameron Johnson as part of a bigger package for a bigger name player. In the offseason? In the offseason. So you don't think, wow, all right. Can I just say, he's got about what, five or six million dollars on that contract. Five, and if it's a big name player you're million. getting, if it's a big name player you're getting, you're going to have to bundle it with a couple of other contracts. And I'm hoping Boy, you're going to say... I've got, uh, of, um, I've got a lot of other players. I've got a lot of other players to thumbs up, thumbs down here. It's true. Oh, you're going you're gonna to elaborate? Love it. Love it. Let's go. <laughs> Jay Crowder. I, I believe thumbs up. Thumbs Boy. up, boys. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. I'm a thumbs down. He will be part of that package. A $10 million expiring contract is going to be very attractive to a couple of teams, particularly those couple of teams that have these superstars that we will talk about later on. Dario Saric. I'm thumbs down. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say thumbs up, not because I I, I, I think he's a, a game changer. I just think he's not going to have much value unless he's a part of your package, Gav. Um, but as a, as, as, as a filler. I'm sure um, Dario wants to be all up in Gav's package. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, look, I'm, I'm thumbs up. I think, he's, I, I think he's back. Look, guys, I'm running it back, so I'm only going to make some minor moves here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, a, I'm a thumbs up for Dario. I, I agree okay. with you, Boyd. I think there is um, not going to be, with the amount of basketball he's missed, there's not going to be a hell of a lot of value in his, even though his contract is a, also about a $10 million expiring. I just don't think sides are going to want to take that risk at the moment. Um, Landry Shamit. <laughs> I do not believe he's coming back. That was not the best showing. <clears throat> yeah, look, I... Boyd. He, yeah, that's... Yeah, no, I don't think he is. Thumbs down, guys. Uh, uh, I am a thumbs up. For the same reason as Sarich, I don't think he's got a hell of a lot of value after last season and yeah. we're going to struggle to move him. Um, the, only, the only way will be is if we buy him out and stretch him. Well, he, he has a team option on his contract, right? Not so it's year. essentially expiring. Not this year. No? He's, yeah, uh, no, he's, he's, he's got one year of guaranteed bucks, money. He's got one year of guaranteed money. And then two, two years of... Um, Team options. Options. So he's only got one year of guaranteed money, though. Yeah, nine million which, bucks. Which is, you know, like you were pointing out with your trade package before. I mean, <laughs> I'd rather throw Shamit into a trade package and, you know, you'll oh, throw so away. Would I. I just don't think that, um, well, let's, let's be honest. We're talking, and we'll bring it up later, but I'm talking a Brooklyn or a Washington. Neither are going to want Landry Shamit. Well, I mean, there's a lot of teams that want to lose in the second round, though. <laughs> hey guys, um, the th the thing with Landry is is that I'd be happy if he was playing at what 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 I know that his ceiling is. He's just not doing it here. We need more of a that uh, that that uh, guy who can create for others. 
and he's just he's just not doing it. Um, as you guys know, campaign um, did not come through as consistently as that backup point guard, and we needed someone Jeez, I wouldn't to have pick up that, that slack. The start of last season. Don't fucking get me started on that because <laughs> we, we could do a whole pot on that. I'm still keeping Kevin Payne, just no spoiler, but still keeping him. But anyway, um, you can spoil Landry it. Shemmett, it's the next name on the list, bro. Yeah, it's fine. Landry <laughs> Shemmett, ultimately, ultimately, he's not what we really need. There's going to be a lot of pressure on the organization to get that secondary playmaker to guide that second unit. And I don't think that Landry, um, he, I don't think he's got it. Best. The best we can do is, as an expiring contract, I believe, is a potential trade where it's almost straight up for a late second rounder, early third rounder. I don't think he's going to be part of a bigger package. We're not going to... No one's going to take that salary on for a second rounder. A second round pick. No one's going to take that on. We'd have to give up a first. True. Uh, Cameron Payne. I'll say thumbs up, but not because I really want to see him back. I just think they'll give him more of a shot than Landry. Boyd? Yeah, look, I've got him back. And not because he outplayed um, 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 his contract dramatically last season. Didn't even but make he's, making, he, he's making $6 million. And while CP3 was, was, was out for that month, he was a fucking star for us. He he oh, guided don't us. Don't go too far. He was he he was fucking spectacular. Oh, he's done a lot. He's, he's chugging the Kool Aid. He's chugging he's the Kool Aid. Solid. He was solid at best. He's done a lot for this franchise in the way of the locker room presence. And I mean, and, I love watching him dance on YouTube. Like, yeah, me too. He's a guys, very good guy. When when we were talking last off season after his brilliant postseason helping us to the finals. He lit it up. We were talking about him, um, some team taking a chance, throwing the 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 not, around about $10 million MLE at him. Mm-hmm. And would we keep him for that? And some of us were like, yeah, 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 we'd probably, some we'd of probably us do something shoot. like that. No, uh, no, I think, I think, I think there was. I, I was probably me. leaning I think, towards, I think we'd keep him more for the culture was, fit and what Monty saw in him. And the but he was hot process. at that time. He was hot coming off that finals run. There was a lot now, of investment in him from Monty, though. Like, there was a lot of personal investment from yeah. Monty hey, look, in him. So, at that point, when he took that contract, that three-year, $6 million, we all fucking fell over and went, wow. Oh, it was good. Uh, it's a really good contract. And that's why I'm a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Cameron Payne won't go anywhere. Um, I think he's safe. Oh, you are a thumbs up. I think he has a much better year. The contract's friendly. It's, and I we're think not going to move it. I yeah. think he. I think he has a much better year. I think we're all going to be pleasantly support, uh, surprised. 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 Uh, all right. Next one, J- Javal McGee. I, I'm thumbs up. I think he comes back. Okay. So here I'm a thumbs down because he had an interview at his. I think his baseball thing, and they were asking him about his upcoming free agency, and the, it was just the way that he worded it. I'd love to have Javal back. Don't get me wrong. Um, but the way that he worded it is that he, and he was talking very much to the fact that he knew his value and he wants to be somewhere where he's appreciated and it's and it's sort of, it's reflected in that contract. It doesn't sound like a minimum that I want him on. It doesn't no. sound like, I, I don't think he's, I don't think he's going to get another $5 million, uh, $5 million contract from the Suns. I think he's, he, I think he's just going to take whatever's best for him and his family. God bless. And um and good on him too because I think he's 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 great for the locker room too that guy he's fucking unreal I'm gonna I'd miss all the fucking the um, um the dogs and all that sort of the shit dog. where the, the dog. fuck was that in the playoffs though yeah no the they um the, yeah. the Suns the Suns actually I believe stopped it stopped people um being allowed to film that and put it out there that's fair enough. And we shouldn't. Um, I'm I'm with Boyd. I think this is a thumbs down, and I think it's because Javal McGee is heading to the end of his career, and he's going to take as much money as he possibly can to close that yeah. off. The Suns paid him five million last year. They're not going to pay him that again. Um, they'll do be looking think, at. Do you the, think there's like, an environment where he came here because of CP3? CP3 is still here. Javale did do his job for the best of. <clears throat> 
the the time he's been with us. Do you not think they pay him more to keep him here to keep no. the new guys together? No, no, and he doesn't deserve it because he got played off the court in the playoffs for five million. Though you don't think he's worth eight, nine? No, 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 not in the slightest. I, I think he's worth. Look, honestly, the the best I think he should be getting is a vet min. Um, but I'd be happy to pay him a portion of the BAE rather than the MLE um, and have him at around three and a half, four million. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that's been fair. And here's the thing. Um, if he could, I mean, he comes on, he's an energy guy, right? He comes on and he feels some good minutes and he um, brings that spark and that fucking, and he gets people up. The problem is, is that he can't, even if, you know, he was given an opportunity to stay on the court, the guy will fucking foul out, man. He, yeah. he, he can't, he, he can't control, he's got there's too much energy, right? He can't, he can't uh, control. Okay, it. next one, Tory Craig. I'm thumbs up. I'm a thumbs down, unfortunately. I love him, but I don't think he's back. I'm a thumbs up because he's still contracted and I don't think we'll be able to move him in a package. I think he's one of the more movable guys. I prefer to be trying to move him over Shemit. Possibly, possibly. I, I think we fucked him around too much in the first place. Now, I know he took more money and he had to do the right thing, but then he went away and then we brought him back. Now, we just fuck him off again at the start of another season. I don't like it. I don't think it says a lot about our team if we do it. Yeah, no, good call. Uh, Bismack Biombo. I'm thumbs down. Thumbs Boy, up. Thumbs I'm up. I'm a thumbs up too. I think with Jav- if Javal, particularly if Javal goes, yeah, um, yeah. Busy's a a decent, nice contract. Um, he's going to be hovering around that vet min. I don't think anyone's going to pay him. Like, I don't think the market's going to be out there paying him a hell of a lot more than that. Um, and particularly if we do get the trade packages towards um, a bigger name, uh, he is going to slot in nicely at that contract level, especially right. as a so, backup centre. I had him down because out of the three of us, I'm the only one that had JaVale coming back. Hmm. And I've got other free agents that appear down there below that I think would... Go over, busy. No, that's fair. That's fair. Um, Aaron Holiday. I think thumbs up. I I'm mean, one thousand. Go one thousand percent thumbs up. You're also a thumbs I'm up. A thumbs yeah. down because he's an unrestricted free agent and he's going to get offers on the market. He's restricted. I, I mean, restricted free agent. He's going to get offers on the market. We're not going to match him. Yeah, I don't know if he will get We that wouldn't many. even play him in the playoffs for fuck's sake. There's clearly... I know. That's why I him. think he's coming back because Monty is getting burned for not giving him minutes. And I think I think he, he'll want to stay and get the minutes. And we all think there's a spot there where he can film I fucking it. like him, man. I really like him. I, I think he I, is... I keep him every day of the week. Don't get me wrong. Um, at, a, at, a, at an MLE... Replacing Javal's MLE, I would take him every day of the week. That's right, because our our MLE this this off season isn't the usual ten. Um, it's that uh, it's around about six, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Six mil. Yeah. Do you even need uh, to say the Alfred next Payton. day? <laughs> Alfred Payton. Alfred No. Fuck. They should have a it. massive thumbs up because clearly, clearly, he's got pictures of Monty in the nude. <laughs> and you and you want to see him you want to fucking you want the hard copies oh <laughs> why this know, guy why has ever idiot. why he ever got a second crack on this team oh it's just i don't monty, get it monty gave it during the year actually oh. made the statement every team needs an alfred payton fuck that i'd rather see nader back <laughs> i would 100 percent rather see nader back on this ro- roster than fucking actually, alfred I agree payton with I would take Nader way before Alfred Bates. Every day of the week. I wish we could go back to our um, one of our earlier pods and um, listen to you guys fucking spoof over Peyton after he had a couple of games where he got like six or seven assists and you were spoofing over him hard. And I oh think man, I was on him. I was I on him being right. a bargain no, based on the fact he left us and started in New York and he, he looked serviceable as a starter for a shit team 
And then we just wanted to play third string. And I thought third string for what he did in New York, he could do well. Well, he I was wrong and he sucked balls. <laughs> He had, he had so much more free range. Free New, New York. Free New York. He almost averaged a triple double with us for a while there. But no, he, he thrives. Ball. I mean, he, um, goes, he goes okay on chip teams. It's, that's his thing. Yeah. Ish Wainwright. He, I'm, I'm thumbs up. Thumbs up for sure. I'm a thumbs up too. He's going to be a minimum contract. Great locker room guy. Everybody loves him. We're going to need minimum contracts to fill out. Um, and he can actually play a little bit. Um, he's, and uh, they, yeah. need to, they need to make the Frank thing right. They need him yes. and Frank on the roster. Yeah, he's... Um, Ish Wainwright, I think, is a... Let's... What's the easiest way to say this? A poor man's PJ Tucker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. It's a very good uh, way. If Faye Lundberg... Yep. I don't see any reason why he's still hanging out in the off season, <laughs> being around the camp. That guy is going to get a run. He's going to get more minutes. There's going to be more opening for him. Thumbs are fucking up. Okay, so I'm going to say thumbs up, but right at the back of the bench, guy, and he's going to have to fucking come a long way if he's um if he's if if he wants to stick. He's but, gonna be he's gonna be a minimum player. Uh, yeah. But reality is, he's not staying here and going into summer league without a promise. Yeah, and, and yeah, that's what I thought too. So he's there. All right. Um, just because, well, this is, just this is the interesting part. Yeah. Appease NBA Twitter, who uh, Phoenix Suns Twitter, who basically want to sack everybody. Monty Williams. Of course, it sums up. Please. He might get a little rap over the knuckles and get told to do something differently or actually listen, but yeah, of course. Or he's yeah, he's back, and I don't even think he gets a fucking um, a slap on the wrist. I mean, oh if, yeah, he gets if, a little bit. Hey, hey, hear this: if he gets, if Sava, um, Sava's been great with the way that he's um, he's taken a step back, right? And we can all we can all agree with that. He's been doing that, and he's still. People are still think he's that guy that doesn't do that, right? But he's been doing that. If he comes in over the top heavy, um, um, Monty will hurry this fuck off. If I fucking stick, if I, he could go anywhere, get more money, and fucking um, and uh, a no. better deal anywhere, or almost that's anywhere. That's not who he is, saying. though. No, it's it's not, not who he is, and but he, I don't think he, I don't think he will respond to to that either. And if and if that something like that does happen. It's going to be the first domino that falls in a lot of dominoes in this franchise, and it's not going to be really good for the future. So the guy is the reigning coach, of NBA coach of the year. He ain't going fucking nowhere. Arguably back-to-back coach of the year. Uh, arguably should have been back-to-back Good coach on. of the year. Suns fans on Twitter, pull your fucking heads in. Yep. Same goes for the next guy, James Jones. Mate, this guy, this guy should have QA above his door when you walk in, not GM. Quiet achiever. He not Boyd. going anywhere. Yeah, no, he stays, man. He cops. He's been copping a little bit of flack about um, um, not trading for Eric Gordon. Oh no, well, just, just, yeah, well, everything that fucking man that wouldn't have saved us, mate. If you could go back in time and fucking, you know, and use hindsight and fucking and. You fix everything, couldn't you? You'd just be the perfect team, and it'd be a shit place to live because, yeah, it'd be no fun. Um, well, boy, if you, you could know, go back in time, you might only have eight children. <laughs> I got five, man. Come on, <laughs> you were saying you're all of them. <laughs> you were saying over in AZ, I had sixteen. I fucking don't. Really mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I hey guys, legit James Jones is brilliant, highly respected around, you know, by you know all GMs. He's a fucking keeper. And if we get rid of him again, that's the second domino after the Monty thing. We keep these two in. Do you know, do you know my fear with James Jones? We're going to Steve Curry. Oh, don't say that. We had Steve Curry in Phoenix doing the jobs and we fucked him. And off he went and twitted his way across to Golden State and won titles. James Jones built this side in three seasons. No, no. That's fucking been- phenomenal. Yeah. What the fuck are people talking about? We went through 10 years of pain trying to build a side that was at least competitive. This guy has Dude. given us an NBA championship caliber competing team in three seasons. 
he's copped some flack over the Jalen Smith thing, and that was a bit out there. I get that, but he's not copping enough um, um, kudos for his uh, for his Cam Johnson steal. Um, you know, he, for all the good that these that these guys in front offices do, um, it's just like, oh yeah, yeah, it just becomes expected. Yeah. And then as soon as something happens, which and the fuck thing is, is that a lot of people are fucking rallying for these moves to be made as well. As soon as something happens, and then all of a sudden they've got their fucking time machine out, and they're like, "Oh, well, I would have done this back then." No, you fucking wouldn't have. You yeah. Fucking idiot. Anyway, no, I, I right, fucking so, hate seeing uh, it. That's, it, his, that's our thumbs blood. up, thumbs down. Any last comments from anyone? No. No. All, we... all good. All right. Off-season trade slash free agent suggestions. So I'm going to roll through a couple of the bigger ones that are out there at the moment. Um, that uh, a lot of what, what do you mean out there, me. though? Like, fuck it. This is all bullshit rumour mill crap that every single pod is talking about, which is all absolute rubbish. No, oh, well, I know. That's true. Okay. Uh, let's, just, let's just touch on a couple. I've only got one real on big it. one that I think is a nice fit. And it's um, one that's sort of been thrown out, but anyway. All right, Go. so number one, Indiana, Brogdon, Turner. Um, basically, the talk is trade out DA. Uh, we bring Brogdon in as a backup point guard for uh, backup one, two. Bring Turner in to replace uh, DeAndre Ayton. Number one, to all you fucking idiots out there that say, let's just trade Ayton for Brogdon and Turner. The numbers don't fucking work. You can't do it. It's $44 million against $18 million on a side and trade. Ain't going to happen. It certainly isn't going to be $44 million worth of production. Or, um, they, or they wouldn't have needed to trade with Sacramento for another point guard. Yes, we can We can trade. Um, it's going to take all of our pieces, though, and some draft picks. Um, all I really want to do is throw a name up. So I'll go through these names. You give us a yes or no, whether you want them on the team, not whether or not it's going to happen. Um, and we move on. Brogdon Turner, Nate. No. No, 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 no. Very good. No, and if we, if we were to add in them fucking salaries to make the Brogdon Turner thing work, um, I don't want to be the cunt giving up the fucking draft picks. I want a fucking bevy of draft picks coming back into my war chest for them to. Now, I like... Me. What, what, now, what I, frigging good has it done then? Don't get me wrong. I like Brogdon. And I think as uh, someone coming off the yeah. bench behind CP and Book, he'd be a really nice fit. Miles Turner is a fucking hack. And I don't give a fuck what anyone else says. If you think that Miles Turner could provide the output that DeAndre Ayton does... You don't watch enough basketball. He is yeah. nowhere near it. No, there's like Brogdon, there's a I... reason he's still in Indiana and old mates That's in exactly Sacramento. Right. <laughs> um, They've been trying to trade him for 20 years. <laughs> but I do I do like Brogdon, um, apart from the fact that the fucker can never stay on the court. Next name, Clint Capella. Now, me, that's a desperation move. That's not moving the needle forward. That is, we're being forced to hand. And look how our hand doesn't need to be and forced. Which, which potentially could happen. We don't know, but okay. Boyd? So in, in this sort of a scenario, again, it doesn't, it does not, um, it doesn't fill the DA um, void by no, 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 no means necessary. No, no way unless you are attaching um, um, a young gun, one of their lanky fucking disruptors on that team, on a on a on a nice contract, um, or a whole fucking shitload of, of picks that we could use to package up. And as you were talking about with Orlando, and they talked about it on the uh, solar panel as well. They did, like like a bit of an asset collection that you're going to fucking use before the trade trade deadline to oh, fill the hole properly. Yeah. Yeah, what what was it? They were talking Wendell Carter, um Jalen hey, hey, hey. and then and then the the, the 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 interesting one was the um uh point guard. I remember uh, like Anthony. his his dad. Oh, yeah, Anthony. Yeah. 
lucky, lucky, uh, fucking Hamo isn't on here because he'd be just saying, no, let's just trade everything we got for Cole Anthony. <laughs> hey, and he does love yeah. him some Cole Anthony. He does that love was a, him some Cole. That was a really, that was a really good pod um, that uh, Dave King and, and Zona put out today. And and that that trade for um, uh, Wendell, Suds, um, Cole, Cole Anthony, Anthony. And, and I think Franz, Franz Wagner. That Wagner. was the other name, yeah. There's two Wagners yeah. there. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Orlando don't do it for DA, unless, of course, they're fucking in love with the guy and they've just got a heart on for him and they just want him that well, bad. Well, the big thing is they've, that they've would be nuts. number one, too. Yeah, I know, I know. They need to do something to that tune, but that, like, man, you could flip them pieces and get, and get some really good shit for that. Yeah. Orlando, it doesn't, that doesn't line up, but what they were talking about, the sense of, um, you know, bagging some stuff up to get a to get a um, you know top twenty guy makes sense. Well, before we move off Orlando though, where does everyone sit on Jonathan Isaac? I know he's like Mister Injury. But... I like Jonathan Isaac. I'm a. I'm I mean, a big we 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 haven't seen him play for so long. We just don't know what he's going to look like. But he's still on their roster. He's coming up. Yeah, yeah. Do they I'm trade off him? Do they maximise his value think, before he I proves his shit? Or... Problem, I think the biggest problem with Jonathan Isaac is he's turning into Nerland's Noel with the Ooh. injuries. I mean, Nerland's, Nerland's, had, Nerland's had a lot of raps on him when he came in, but he's just injured all the fucking time. And I think Jonathan Isaac's in the same boat. I think he's worse he's just, Inj- injury-wise. He's not playing enough. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd take look... my up before I took Jonathan Isaac. Cool. I think um, I think yeah. Look, I used to like um, um, Jonathan Isaac as well. I fucking I, I, I can't remember exactly what I liked about him. It was that fucking long ago that I saw the cunt play. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, look, yeah, no, no, thanks. All right, they they're sort of the short. Uh, without going into the next segment, which is going to be superstars. Oh no no, uh, let's, go, let's go back. For you guys, any other names? I I just want to like we're, we were pretty drunk when we spoke about it last time. So when the Bagley Mobile pulled into uh, Arizona Mills, what do we reckon? Because he's what is he on? He's on a seven million dollar qualifying offer. He's come off eleven million dollar salary, and he's got a twenty eight million dollar cap hold attached to him. Do you reckon anyone goes near it? Do you reckon he becomes trade bait in the off season? Do you reckon we even look at it? We won't look at it. And yes, he will become some they'll be trying to do some sort of sign and trade with him. There's too much fucking um um baggage in that whole situation. Too much um, baggage. He's in Detroit. <laughs> Detroit don't give a fuck. Yeah, no. They're no, just we accumulating don't. pieces to make one big massive move and shift a whole bunch of stuff at once. Well he'd have to be in a sign and trade name. So I mean first up we'd have to agree to um, you know, whatever that sign and trade was that he wants, he'd have to agree. And we're going to want more. <laughs> and yeah, I don't think it happens. Do you think he's worth 15 million? Oh, I'd pay him. No, I'd pay him 15 minute, um, 15 million as a starting power forward on um, potential, maybe starting off, coming I'd off the bench. I'd pay 15 million to fuck off out of Phoenix. <laughs> I'd, 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 on potential, and I'd. I'd well, that's what that's what in. fuel costs at the moment, so it's okay. <laughs> I think he's. I think he's got. Um, yeah, take a swing at fifteen million a year. Um, it's still movable, and and just hopefully, hopefully he just sort of um, fills that potential, that upside that he does have. His fucking dad's worth it, worse than Lavar Ball. I don't, I don't. I don't talk to his dad, man. I can't, couldn't tell you anything about him. <laughs> uh, any other any other names you guys want to throw up as looking at our squad potential trades? Hey, what are, are we going to talk about free agents or just yes. you just moving into superstars? Yeah, free agents as well. Yeah, because yeah, I, I got a list of free agents. I wouldn't mind because um, before when I said, look, I think Javale comes back, but that's where I send Busy out, and given a little bit of looking for security around DA, whether he's here or he's not. There's a couple of free agents that are unrestricted, worth a look. So do we do we sign a free agent center if Saric stays though? And let's well, let's I don't have Saric staying. Hypothetical: we got Da Javal. 
and Sarge. Well, just, see, Tommy I had, is, Tommy I had is Sarge signing. and Busy both going. Yeah. yeah, well, no, tell us your signing, Nate, given your circumstances, because that's what I want to hear. I want to hear well, your team. Yusuf Nurkic is an unrestricted free agent, and his last salary was 12 million bucks. I mean, that there's a position for him. Here's the, here's the, here's, wise, it's going to be a squeeze. We, 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 can't well, sign a, we can't sign an unrestricted free agent for anything over really the – unless we move out a whole yeah, – Well, that's way. what I'm saying. We've got a lot of pieces here. So if they get off some of these pieces in a trade – Okay, or, if you can create for, a, 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 for a, a pick, then 12 million, if he's happy on the same salary, isn't a lot to come up with. I think he gets, I think he's going to get um, a smidgen more, not yeah. quite 20, but I think he's going to get yeah. mid, mid to high team. I'm not so sure off his injury, though. That's where, that's where I thought, yeah. I thought maybe that 12 million puts him in the value range. Anyway, I had one more at the, the big man position. And again, someone that was injured most of last season was Thomas Bryant from Washington. Yeah, I like Unrestric- him. Unrestricted free agent, and his salary was eight million bucks. I had him as well. Like him, like him, like him. I think he's going to um, get paid. Look, if there's some sort of sign, if if it could be a dual sign and trade, um, whereas they give it and then we do it, that would be one of the things that I would consider with a whole bunch of other shit pieces um, with the DA thing. But a whole I, I, I was doing this independent of DA. Uh, yeah, uh, look, no, look, I just don't think... Because imagine that coming off the bench game. and he actually hits his potential for that kind of a salary. Hey, Are you, you saying that... I, playing... think, I think you're going to see Thomas Bryant in the same mould as Daniel Teese last year, where he gets paid a hell of a lot more than what you're expecting him to get paid. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I, I don't see him going over 12 with his I injury history. You do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the only other name I had down there was um, a replacement for Landry um, and Bryn Forbes from Denver. Unrestricted free agent, closing salary was four and a half million. Who's she? <laughs> Very good um, um, three-point cheap, wing. Yeah. Cheap three-point cheap, wing. Um, but, I mean, look at Landry. What did he produce for us? So I was just looking at um, – I've got him going out. So what was the free agents out there that could fill that position – and was on an upswing, uh, rather than whatever the fuck Landry gave us. Uh, so that's where I put Bryn Forbes in. But that, well, that was what I had down for. Other than unre- other than um, if you want to just swing for the fucking fences and banana boat crew, Camelo Anthony is unrestricted free agent. Blake Griffin's an unrestricted free agent. I Not that I think Chris CP three and Blake will ever get back together. But from a I, from an un- unrestricted free agent point of view, I actually like Tyus Jones. Um. To come in as a backup point, I think he'd be a really nice fit. He did. He did really well every time Jar was out. I think he'd be a really nice fit. Whether whether or not he ends up leaving or whatever out of Memphis, but he's probably going to get a decent bag. Let's be honest. But I'll tell you what, I'd pay him nine million before I pay Chamet. Mm. Yeah, agree. I um a couple of the guards, um, are free agents. If uh, Paddy Mills um, uh, doesn't oh, take up his uh, his uh, talking with your heart there, Boyd. Yeah, that's if, that's not if, happening, dude. If he he's got a player option for six million, um, and probably not much of a guarantee to get a further contract. If we were to offer him a similar um, six million dollar contract over, say, two or three years, I take him in a heartbeat, and I feel like he's uh, mate. He's he he is. He shoots the way that Shemit, we want Shemit to shoot, and I think he's got um, he's got more more playmaking abilities. How um, old is he? Now? We see it for the Boomers. Um, How no, old is he now, though? He's old. He's well, he's thirty two, thirty three. Okay, so he's Curry age basically. Curry's thirty four. So, and I'm not saying sign him up for the future. I'm saying we've got a window, and Patty Mills has won a few, right? Yep. And I am talking with my heart. Um, but what I'm saying is that there could be like a moon's align type situation where we can <laughs> offer that campaign type deal that six million a year for over three years. We get the the last you know um, ounce of juice out of him, and um, and he does a real good job. He does, and he's he, he's consistent. That dude is fucking consistent. Um, so I I I had that guy 
I, and um, I also I'm, had, guessing, I'm guessing you also had Joe Ingles and mate. Um, I, of course I did. <laughs> no, I looked at I looked at Big Joe, but he's um and dude, Big Joe whilst he's a he's a he's a three, three slash four. He's um he's got the playmaking. He'd be a nice fit, but ultimately he's going back to Utah, man. He's a three slash forty. He's yeah, he's he's going back if to we, Utah. If but we're going to go pie in the sky. Why don't we just say Jalen Brunson? I'm not going pie in the sky. I didn't say Joe Ingles. I'm I'm still back at Patty Mills. I am, um, but I look. All I'm saying is that I think that Joe Ingles would be a nice fit on this team with his um ability to create and his. Like I was vision. giving you shit. <laughs> oi, would you, oi, if if he wanted to sign here for a for a for a little contract, would you take Joe Ingles? I mean, of course I would. We all Aussies, we'd all love to That's see all I'm Aussie That's all stuff, I'm But I mean, against That's all I'm who? Saying. Against who? What? Well, let's like let's put Joe Ingles or Camelo Anthony. I would take Ingles over to Camelo. You take Ingles? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just right looking at the now. banana boat factor with CP3, and you know, you never know what else he can get out of him. Well, when we start playing games on a fucking banana boat, mate, we'll <laughs> we'll go get we'll go play Carmelo, whatever he wants. <laughs> Oi. Right, I've got I've got an interesting one because I have, get, and, and, and I hate I hate flashbacks, but I have got an interesting one. What about TJ Warren? No, coming off the bench. No, fuck him. No. He's never coming back. Don't touch him. Leave Bro, him fucking he gone. Didn't, he didn't play for a second this year, and it wasn't his fucking ankle. The guy's got something wrong in his head. He's got Mark L. Fultz fucking yips. He's got something else wrong with him, man. It's a, look, and it could be something serious like a mental health issue, which fucking, you know, you know, oh, I don't want you to die or anything, but he's is something fucking not right with him. You don't want to fucking pay that cunt money and you don't want to rely on him to be on the court. Um no, and don't fucking get too upset about it if anyone's fucking getting upset. I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's something fucking wrong with him. The other Guys, the guy. I can love you, boy. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Um, Gary, Gary. What about Gary Harris? What are your thoughts on Gary Harris? He's Too not expensive. making anywhere. He's not making anywhere near the money that he got paid this year. It's because he hasn't produced anywhere near the value. <laughs> no, look, he's he's in he's in mid twenties, isn't he? Gary Harris is going to get mid twenties. No, no, no. Isn't he coming off twenty two million or something? No, dude. He's he's probably he's probably gonna get between five and ten if he's uh, going 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 good. I think. Fuck if I we could be, I, could be Harris, I may as well keep fucking Alfred Payton. Don't. Gary Harris is off a twenty one million dollar contract. I know he is. Hey, you keep Alfred Payton. I'll take Gary Harris and we'll go two and two. Gav, <laughs> fucking you're you're gone. I'd whoop your ass. Uh, the other, and then we play basketball. And there's, also, there's also a twenty million dollars salary difference. For fucking I just do it all myself. Um, the the last one for me that I had from a free agency perspective was um, was Bruce Brown from Brooklyn. You guys are on two K. Yeah, I don't know. There's not. There's. I mean. Goes all right for Brooklyn too. It was a yeah, flare, it, it was a flash in the pan though. Like there, there was a one season where he's really good, like as a backup, and you just we didn't see a lot from him other than last season though. Well, uh, let's be honest. Last season, fucking Durant and Kyrie Irving, when they actually played the game, just did everything. That's why Patty Mills couldn't get a shot. Oi, um, let's. Um, did you touch on uh, the superstar trade, Gab? We're just about to go there now, so let's go superstar. We've been rumors. going long enough. Let's do this. Four, four names. Four names we've heard. Um, I'm going to run through the names. I just want from you guys. Let's be realistic here. From you guys, a yes or no? Do you believe that there is any possibility any of these guys join the Phoenix Suns in the off season? First name is Kevin Durant. In the off season? No. Yeah. Nope. Boyd. No way. Me neither. Damian Lillard. No. <laughs> nope. LeBron James. Nope. No. Bradley Beal. In the off season? Yeah. No. 
or well, let's say ne- any time in next season. Out of all those names, I think depending on what happens with DA, Bill and Durant are interesting, knowing that at least Durant would want to be in Phoenix. Bill's, I think, through all of his tweets and everything, has expressed interest in staying where he is. Um, but I don't believe that the corporation might feel the same way. <laughs> well, he did come out today and say, uh, I've made my decision and you'll find out in the next couple of weeks. Which means that now that he said that, he and he, if he leaves Washington, he's guilty of tampering. Oh, Mr. Silver. <laughs> they might, um, what, and they won't, but they, they might veto whatever he fucking tries to sign. Nah, they the won't. They'll just, they'll wait and they'll find the organization afterwards because it's more money for them than vetoing it. So we all agree Lillard and LeBron are no chance. Um, yeah, I don't think that so. KD and Bill are a chance. Hang on a minute. One, Even those two is more take likely. the mathematical whatever out of LeBron, nobody in Phoenix would accept him. I'd probably rather not, lose no, than no. win with fucking LeBron. Yeah, probably not. I don't I, I think we would. Yeah, we well, we look what we, we did with Chris Paul, win. man. Yeah, we'd win. <laughs> we fucking we we took we, we we change our colours pretty quick as soon as they pull on that fucking jersey. Right? Oh no, I don't want to win that way. <laughs> Bro, I know you don't but you fucking you fucking would. We'd be on a pod in fucking um, in four months' time, and you'd be like, "Oh wow, this fucking opens up this and that." You know what? You know what? You know what? LeBron is the goat. He is way better than Jordan. No, I'm pretty, <laughs> no, I, I, I pretty sure know. I'd still call him a cunt. <laughs> All right, um, yeah. KD or Bill? Which one's more likely, Nate? I think KD, based on the fact that he would want to be here. Boy. I think Bill, based on the fact that he's got a little bit of control with this year being an option, his option. Um, and I think if he was to express his his uh, wanting, forcing his way to a, to, a, to a club that has been talking to him, um, I think that Washington would realise that, okay, he's going to go and sign elsewhere. He's going to um, knock back his player option and he's going to sign elsewhere. I will trade him, we will trade him to get at least something back. So I think Bill's the most likely, but I, after you finish, Gav, I've got, I've got one I want to bring up. No worries. Um, I think both are actually really likely if we want to. Brooklyn desperately need cap relief. Um, and if KD walked in there and went, I want out and I want to Phoenix, um, we have some really, really good assets for the Brooklyn organisation. Yeah. As well, not only not only expiring contracts, but draft picks. Because after this season, we ha- we own all of our draft picks. All of them. I will I will um, I will entertain the idea of KD trying to force his way to Phoenix if Kyrie Irving leaves, and um, and the the kingdom's falling down in Brooklyn. That's what I believe. Um, yeah, no, I, will, I, look, I, will I, I tend to agree with you there. I mm. also think that Bill. Um, has made a decision and his decision is to get the fuck out of Washington. Um, <laughs> and I think that uh, he would be, he he's the type of player that would be extremely excited about playing alongside CP3 and Devin Booker. And again, Washington's more than happy to take the assets and more than happy to take the expirings. We already seen that with some of the fucking trash they've picked up. Gents, um, th- this is my at so says J face when I really want to jump in and speak for about 20 minutes. Um, I'm just going to do it for one though. Uh, here's a question out of the th- two pitches, one pitcher is CP3, Bill, and Booker. The other pitcher is CP3, Booker, and KD. Which picture would you rather see? KD. I'm with you, Gav. And I know I know Boyd isn't necessarily the biggest KD fan. And if, if Hammer was with us, he'd be dizzy on. on screen. Only so. reason, for me, the main reason is Roster that fit. if we've got Beal, Beal, Book, and CP, we effectively lose the... We'll, we'll, sorry. We lose the effectiveness of uh, Mikhail Bridges and we don't address the power forward issue. I get that. I'm picking up what you're putting down. And I think on paper, 
No, on paper, going... on the court. There's a picture of them on the court, dude, dude, filling listen. out the court. Fucking listen, listen to me for a second. The but I'm Justin. I don't do that. Right there. But instead <laughs> of Jay Crowder, you've got Bill or KD. Which one do you want? I'm going to say that I will go with the Beal combo only because I can see us being contenders for the next 10 years rather than having a three-year window. Yeah, because I only yeah, want our three-guard combos have worked so well for us in the past. I want, I want fucking, I want 10. So I would go Beal. You're paying, you're playing a four-man guard combo. Because Mikhail no, Bridges no, is no, I'm not. Guard. No, I'm not. There would need to be some um, some uh, tinkering. Say, McCall goes um, to the bench. There'd, there'd, there'd need to be some tinkering for for a couple of seasons, or a, at least one season, until CP3 is happy to um, to come off the bench and guide the second unit, and possibly get another contract, play into his forties, and um, um, on a on a team friendly contract, and and, and then just what, books books our point guard. John Stockton type fucking um, um, minutes. Jason, John, the, the, think don't, John don't ever bring up that fucking name again, piece of shit. Fifty-two Jason minutes again. Kidd style setup. Yeah, whatever. John Stockton was um, better than Jason Kidd. John Stockton, played longer too. John Stockton's also the biggest piece of shit in NBA history. Why? <laughs> All right. Do some research. No, I don't have to because I don't really need to form an opinion on John fucking Stockton. I know him as a player on the court, and that's what I'm basing my comparison off of Gavin. Now, <laughs> now, Beal gets us a window, a contending window for 10 years, and I'm all about being around for another 10 years watching Suns basketball. So you reckon a, a 32-year-old think... Brad Beal is, gives us 10 years? Hey, is he 32? No, he's not. He's in his mid-20s. Mid twenties, I'm sure he's twenty seven, maybe worse, maybe 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 seven years. I feel like I need to mark this point and edit the fuck out of this. <laughs> How old is he? Did you look it up then? Yeah, he's twenty eight. Fuck off, yeah, guys. Say, give me six or seven years. All right, pay until he's thirty five. Anyway, we get a longer window. That's my thing there. Now, I the one that I want to bring up, boys. The one that I want to bring up. Is um, Carl yeah, Anthony Towns? That's a guy that I want. That's it in a sign and trade. How the Going fuck back. does that work? No, no, no. It's us. It's us adding in them um, salaries that we've got. So to... everybody else and Da. Not everybody. Think about it, Gavin. How much does Cat make? Thirty-seven million. Thirty. Yeah, he's he's super maxed, isn't he? Yeah, look, I, I get what you're saying, and I get the fit so, with so, Booker so. and all the rest of it, but it's look at the way he finished his series. He was a crying little bitch. He needs to grow up. Yep. He doesn't need. He doesn't have the weight of the entire franchise with a bunch of young cunts around him on the Phoenix Suns. He's also playing third <coughs> string on the Phoenix Suns. He's also he's shooting. No, no, he's not. Yes, he's, he is. He's, no, he's, he's an attitude. He's a little boy. He's, he's playing 34 third million. string. 34, 30, million. 34 million. So you've got 19 so, million coming from Deon, De, De, 18 or 19 million coming from DeAndre. 17, I thought it was, but yep. Yep. Well, if you were to throw Jay Crowder or Landry Shaman, 27. 27, you need to get within, what is it, 125% or 25%? Oh, Minnesota's going to go, to, fuck yeah, we'll number. take Landry Shaman. No, okay. Give him Drake. Why not? We did. <laughs> hey, do this. Give him DeAndre Ayton. Give him Jay Crowder. Give him fucking um. Um. Give him a couple of draft picks. Get Carl Anthony Towns here, who would want to be here with his boy. They they want to be be together. That cunt shooting fucking nearly ten threes a game at forty two percent or something stupid like that. And we've got we've got our backcourt loves to play in the fucking mid range. He's going to be. He's going to spread it out even further, man. We're going to be so lethal with that type of um, um, stretch five. It'll be fucking insane. Absolutely <laughs> insane. Anyways, that's just my. It's a great idea. It's pick never, it apart. Ever going to happen. He actually half sold me on it by the end of it. After I stopped mocking him and gave him a chance to talk, I was like, actually, he might have a point. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds great. Won't happen. Yeah, I agree. It won't happen. Uh, okay, so. 
let's wrap this up. We've yeah, been going please. long enough. Let's and Nate, Nate's shit. already upset. He feels like he's got to edit too much. And he was already upset before we started. Um, oh, cranky ass. Just don't just edit anything, Nate. <laughs> don't edit it. Last comments, Nate. Uh, you know what? I just want to say thanks again to Justin and Dan. Um, yeah, I so says Jay and Duarte for the hospitality they showed us while we were over there. Justin went out of his way. Dan had us at his home, which a lot of people wouldn't do with you and me when we're drinking, Gav. He took a big risk. Um, and even even Justin introducing us to his family. Like, I think we met his wife before Dan ever did. Is that yep. how it worked? Yep. So those two fellas really went out of their way. And I just wanted to say thanks again quite publicly for what they did for us. Absolutely. Oh um, thank you, guys. You were fantastic. Boy, oh last comments. God. Yeah, guys, Um, all the boys sent me a message when you were on your flight back over saying, fuck, we wish it was you who was over here, Boyd. We fucking, they, they're, they're fucking, they're dicks. We want we, proof um, of this message. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't believe it. I, I, I don't, don't need proof it. of anybody calling me a dick. <laughs> it's probably no, look, I, um, no, look, yeah, no, look, yeah. Um, cheers for all the stories, boys. Um, and Hemo, we miss you, man. Come back. That we do, Hemo, we do miss you. Can't wait to have you back on. Hopefully, uh, well, NBA draft is later this week. And we play no part in it. Oh, well, maybe we do, maybe we don't. If the trade's already in, maybe someone's oh, selecting for us. Quiet achiever. Maybe someone's selecting for us. Maybe we trade into the second round. Uh, we have got some players working out in Phoenix at the moment for the draft. Mostly second round type guys, but that kind of makes me feel like we're looking at uh, some sort of trade for a second rounder. But um, Paul, we will have you on the podcast at some stage. Um, much love. I, I know we haven't organised it yet, but uh, Dervish and Well from Fanning the Flames, we will get you on. We we promise. We no, we really do. maybe some stage. Yeah, that's how um, we feel, buddy. Hello, we miss you. Can't wait to see you guys next week. Uh, this was a hell of a lot of fun to jump back on. It's been a couple of weeks, obviously, so um, heap of fun. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Boyd. Thank you, little one, for jumping in at the end. <laughs> and we will see you next week. See you guys. How was that? Was that good? I don't know if that was good. It's going to be a good time. <laughs>